Hey, what's up? Hey, so are we doing persistence now? Yes, it's time to can finally we... fix the application to store our to-do items. Can we please not have hello yes with anyone, please? <laughs> Uh, that is why I'm looking forward to this episode. I can get rid of yeah. that. Anytime we restart the server, we lose the data. Free, yeah. So here's an idea. I could save the data to a file. Yeah, but what if you have complicated data? Like... Yeah, so here's an idea. I take all my Java objects, I turn them into JSON, and I save the JSON to a file. You realize how much you'll be searching, right? It'll literally be iterating through loops to find a particular object. You can't, yeah, yeah you can't find anything. You can't update anything. It'll take a while. Yeah, but I only have like a hundred to do items at most. It would be okay, I guess. And what about relations? What about relations? That is a good question. What are relations? So two object, okay, I'll put it this way. What if two items uh, relate uh, have some common attribute or there's a link between different attributes of two well the items is not not the right word here but uh, two types of items two types of items yes what do you mean give me an example what if I have different types of to-do items one of them can be grocery shopping mm -hmm. inside that you'll have whatever i don't know fish meat food etc one of them is subscriptions netflix and hulu or prime mm -hmm. they're related to each other in the sense that they're both to do items but they might have different attributes themselves like when is the bill due yeah anything that sort of thing yeah, yeah. So the data, the data is related to one another in some ways, but yeah. that relationship would be hard to express in JSON. Yeah, unless you want to write different JSON files for each of them. That, that's just a hassle, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a lot of work to keep all this data organized and consistent. Yep. And also, it's a bad pattern for growing your app. As your app grows more complicated, <laughs> yeah. you would have to be smart about the way you're saving yes, all the exactly. JSON files. You're not thinking about 10 objects. You, you should be thinking about at least 10,000. At True. least 10,000, yeah. Yes. And I would not want you... to be searching 10,000 objects like every time I want to do something. Yeah. I just want to point out that there is nothing wrong with this approach. Yeah. We have been using Fair. Postman, and Postman saves the collections as That's JSON files. Right, yeah. And we saw that in the file system. It's a JSON file in the documentation folder created by the Postman. Yep. And it's a JSON file mm. to store data. It's fine. But for our application, this kind of data will get more and more complicated. And we want to be able to express relationships between these this parts of the data. And we can see that you can try to do that in JSON. For instance, there is some notion of identifier in this JSON, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, there is some notion of oh, identifier yeah. here. And then there are some ways to link these identifiers together with other parts of the data, but it gets complicated. It's really complex. Yeah, and Postman is doing this because it wants to be able to write some file you can actually read here in IntelliJ. Yeah. But we don't care about storing the data the to-do items yep. in a way that is readable in the IntelliJ. We well, because only... you have the server for that. You yeah. have the client for that, most importantly, mm -hmm. not the server. Our main goal is to have persistent data for our app, for yes. the thing that we have here. Yeah. So there is a better way to express this data as a file in a way that scales and also in a way that you can transport this knowledge to other areas. Yeah. So currently, we are making things simple here, and we are going to use a, a database system that stores to a file. Yep. But the language we are using to communicate with this database is the same or at least very similar to the language you would use to communicate to other database systems yeah. that are more sophisticated. Yep. And we will run into a problem with this when we try to deploy. And the solution would be to use a different database system. If you but want then to... converting is not difficult. If you say it's yeah. almost the same. Yeah. That's it. So we can go from the database system we are going to use called SQLite to another one called Postgres or even to other ones with less effort 
then it would be to convert from our own handmade yeah, files. JSON file system thing to yeah. store the data across yeah. server runs. Another so, thing is that, so a, a big part of wireframing and diagramming is actually thinking about the different types of data that you might have in your application. And it's basically thinking about how your database should work. Yes. Like how you will have persistent data, what data you need to show to clients, what you need on your end as the server for computations and stuff like that. Yes. So if you've done wireframing well, this is key. Yeah, that's a main point of using a database system. You have to think about the structure of your data. In the case of our application, the structure of our data is very simple. Yep. It's a, a table with identifiers mapping to descriptions. Yes. It's but in general, an identifier. <laughs> yeah, but in general, your application will have more structure to this data. Yeah. But in any case, okay, let's use the database system called SQLite. Yeah. It will save everything to a file, but we don't have to worry, worry about, about how it's actual, Yeah, we don't have to worry about actually querying the file a million times by looping. We don't have to worry about yes. how SQLite is doing its thing. It'll yes. do it for us. We will talk to SQLite with a high-level language that other database systems also yes. use, which is called SQL. SQL, yeah. Uh, structured query language. Okay. The way we add SQLite to our project is, okay, if you are lost here in the architecture, the database system lives right next to the server, so, yes. not to the client. Yeah. So we are not dealing with JavaScript at this point any longer. We yeah. popped out of the client and we are back on the server. Yes. So the CSS we did in the last episode, that was... It's completely different. Yeah, it's, it's it was in the client. Yeah. We are going to revisit the client much later in this series. So yeah, let's add the database system to the server. And the way to do this is to add this dependency to the project. And we know how to do that with Gradle. Yeah. Up to this point, we have been using Javelin, and Javelin was giving us instructions on how to add everything to Gradle. Okay. But now we need to add something that Javelin doesn't know. It doesn't exists, care yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. So we have to add this package. And the way to do this is to... Find it first. Yeah, go to Maven Central. Maven Central. We have a link to Maven Central in this page, the central repository. Yes, yeah. So go to Maven Central and look for the package you want. Well, and then, that's, it. that's it. Yeah, and then find the latest version. We are always using the latest yes. and greatest in this course. And then there is uh, some instructions here on how to install, including instructions for Gradle. Yep. For some reason, I don't know why, they say the implementation, implementation yeah, here. I, I don't get it. But then you copy that into your Gradle file, build.gradle, it's right here. Yeah. And we do that the same way we did all the other dependencies. But let's change this, because I don't know what this is. Let's change this from implementation to compile. Compile, yes, please. Yeah. And now we save, and IntelliJ will download and install. Yeah, it'll index and do stuff. And then we can start using this. To so start to use this, let's look for the documentation for this particular package. Yep. Easy enough. And usage. Okay. So probably this is the most handstanding we'll have to do in this <laughs> series. Okay. Because the way you talk to a database in Java is slightly convoluted. Oh, first slightly. It's really? slightly. Just a tiny <laughs> bit. The first thing is we have to connect to the database. If we were to connect to some other databases, this would be over the network and yep. it would be complicated. But this yeah. is SQLite. It's, yeah, and it's local. So you don't have to worry yeah. about URLs and ports where the database is up and stuff like that. Yeah, we can just copy this code. So yeah, right this is interesting. Here. This is our database for now. This, this local variable is our database for now. This right. is what we are replacing yeah. in the, this episode and the next one. Yep. So that's how you do that. So you create a connection first. Yes. And here I you am using option return a lot of times to do the import yep. to here this guy can throw an exception in case something goes wrong with connecting to the database. So we can say that we want to add an exception, exception to the yes. method signature, That's which means ideal. that if you cannot connect to the database, this whole the thing public will, static void main will throw an exception. Yes. It will blow up. The whole thing will blow up. So this is just creating a connection. In this case, it really is just creating a file here in the file system, and we will see that in action. This part of the string is how you connect to the to database, it, yes. where it lives. Yep. So 
So first, JDBC, that's the protocol for talking database, to database. Yeah, it's the literally the Java database connector. Yes. That's the full phone. <laughs> Yeah, and you can talk to different kinds of databases. So we have to be specific and say yes. we are using SQLite as yes. opposed to Postgres Whatever, or MySQL. Yeah. And then we have to give it a file name. Yeah. And we want the file name to be to do's. To -do's. Yeah, so now let's restart the server. And we are connecting to the database. We are not doing anything, anything with it. Yeah. But just by the fact that we are connecting to a database, I expect to see a file something, here yeah, in the something. file system. We learned that we have to refresh yeah. and synchronize. I don't even remember how to do that. I think it's in file. Oh, 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 oh. Synchronize. synchronize. Done. But I don't see the to-dos file here. No, it doesn't have anything. You've not created anything. Well, I have created a connection, and I was expecting that that would create a file here. Oh. Let's see if the project files view shows that. No. So maybe so. it doesn't create a file when we connect, but when we do something Actually, uh, with, with the, the connection. Yeah. We'll see. On the next line. That is odd, though. We can create a statement. Creating a statement is, I want to start interacting with this database. And an interaction is something like, I will create a table. Yeah. I will add some, some data, yeah. some data to a table. Yeah. Or I will select something from a yeah. table. All these interactions are statements. And a table is just, think of it like an Excel it spreadsheet. An, yes, it is an actual table. Think of it's it an, like actual an actual table. table yeah. We will see that as an actual table. Oh, there the file is. Oh, it just it took a while. Time, yeah. But the file is there. So when we connect, it creates that file. Okay. So now, before we even do something with the file in Java, I want to show you how to explore that file in IntelliJ. Oh. So there's something interactive? Oh, I see to-dos. Is that yeah. it? No, no that is great. Yeah. yeah, the elephant here is the great. Yeah. OK, so we told you that we want you to use the ultimate version of IntelliJ. And this is part of the reason. The yeah. other part was JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, we, we had JavaScript support here because we were using ultimate. We also have database, database support here yeah. because we are using ultimate. So we can come here to the database and add a data, data source. source. Yeah. That is SQLite. And here we have to say where to find this data source or that will be the to name do. of the data source, no, really. No, no. This is the name of the data source. It's called to do's. Yeah. I can give it any name. This is where to find the identifier. And you can see the same URL. Yeah. It's right here. So we can find that file to do's.db. Yeah. And let's test the connection. Okay, it's it works. Working, yeah. It works. You may be seeing some other. Uh, of these steps. Don't need to worry about this right now. Yeah. The main thing is that you are able to test this connection and you are connecting to that file. You yeah. may have to also install the driver. So you may see this screen when you open this the first time and it will say download the driver. This is the same driver we are using in our app, yeah. but we installed it for our app, not for IntelliJ. So yeah. we have to install it again. Yes. But this is the driver and then we can come here to our connection. Yeah. And we can connect to this file in particular, and the, the connection is successful. It's OK. Apply, so let's okay. OK. That's it. Yeah. And now we can see a console in which we can write Two SQL. Stuff, yeah. I can write SQL. No, it's not how you write write. Write SQL here. So let's actually. Also, we it. can see here the structure of the database. Yeah. So there are some schemas, and schemas are tables. That's yeah. how SQLite calls the tables. And currently, there is only a SQLite master, master table. table. Yeah. Don't worry about this. No, this is, don't touch it. Yeah, don't, this is something that uh, SQLite itself uses, uses its, uh, yeah. to do things. Yeah. And this is for management of the database. We don't touch this. But currently, there are no tables that belong to us. Yep. So let's create one. Yes. We can come here to our application, or we could do it here in the console. Which one do you like? Application. Looks let's, cooler. OK, let's do it in the application. So we have a connection already. Yes. We can say to the connection, please. Yeah. Execute object. Uh, I think it's called create statement. Yeah, so create oh. a statement. And this is going to be our statement. And now with this statement, we can say execute this query. Yeah. This SQL query. Which and is 
create create a table. Whatever. Yeah, we want to create a table. Yep. But remember, this code is going to run, run every, every time, time yeah. we restart the yeah. server. And if you just say create table again It'll and again, create 50, try to create fifty. It will fail. Instances, yeah. It will It'll fail. Throw the exception. Yeah, it may be, It may throw an exception. It will fail because the table already exists. Yeah. So we want to say create table if, if not, not exists. exists. Yeah. And then we say the table name. Yeah. The table name may be items. Yeah. And then we have to say what are the Attributes, columns yeah. on the table. We have identifier. an identifier, yes, which is should an be, integer. Yes, should be the primary key. It should be unique for every item. That's why the yeah. primary key. The primary key means unique for every item. Yes, and then you have to have an auto auto increment thing as well. Auto increment is remember this trick we had here. <laughs> To always like I, generate yeah. fresh identifiers. This is a better one. Yeah, it, SQLite knows how to do this for you yeah. and come up with these new identifiers as you add not new items to the list. Yep. Yeah. And then we also have the description, which is text. which is a text. Yeah. Note the similarity between this structure, this table structure, which looks like an Excel spreadsheet with two columns. And this object, they are related, right? Yep. You see an identifier here, identifier, identifier here, there, description, yeah, description, and description. description. Yep. So there is a relationship between objects in yes. Java and lines in a database, yep. lines in a table in, in a database. database yeah. So now this is creating a table. Yeah, it's not doing be. anything to the table, like but adding yeah, items. Or that's anything. fine. Let's see what's happening. Let's see what's happening by rerunning the server. Now, the file already exists, yeah. so we don't have to do any work there. But let's go to the console now. But let's go to the console and refresh this, and then we see the some items. items. Yeah, that's the new Just table. for curiosity, you can come here to the SQLite master and, and you, you can, can see, see that there's a new table created. Yeah. yeah, you can even see the SQL that was used to create to that table. Yeah. So that's the administrative stuff that you should not touch, yeah. but it's interesting to see how it looks. Also, there are these sequences. When we add items, it yep. will auto increment. Well, it will store that in here. here yeah. Currently, it's empty because we haven't we added haven't anything. Added. But yeah, in the items, we're table, only concerned about this. That's it. That's our table, yeah. the one we just created. Don't screw around with the SQLite tables. Yeah. Look at it. Don't change it. Yeah. Don't don't ever try to modify anything there. But we can see the table right here. It yeah. is the identifier with a key. Yeah. It looks super cool. And the description. Yes. And I can even use this view Interface, to, yeah, to interact, interact yeah. with Let's the database. Try. So here I can add a row. Yeah. The identifier is generated. generated so we don't have to say anything. it. And the description is hello. Yes, it is yellow. Yeah. Shirt. Yellow hash. <laughs> Better than before. <laughs> Press enter. And so far, nothing happened. Yes. This we has not been, it, yes. this is not yet on the database. This has not been executed by the database. This is just us wishing to create this yes. line. There is this menu item here that is hidden, but it's right here. That is, Push take to, this, yeah. take these interactions and commit it to, to the, the database. database yeah. And that's what the green arrow means. Go to the database and commit that to the database. And when we do that, you can see that there are, some queries ran yep. here. So there are some queries running. Insert into the table items, into the column description, the values, yellow hash. Yeah. And the identifier now oh, is here. Is one, yeah. And if we do that again, we'll see hello ooze. And mm. just push that, yes. That's we it. see the incrementation yeah. of the identifier. How about we go to SQLite sequence table and see what? SQLite sequence. The items. Yep. The items table. Table now has, has two elements. Yeah. Has the, the sequence has two elements, and it's interesting that it's not only the number of elements because I can come here to the items and you can table. Delete one, yeah. I will delete one of these guys, and say that yes, I want to delete that. Yep. And when I come here and refresh, refresh how do I refresh? By clicking here. 
This is two. Still two, yes. Two. Because it's the still last two. generated sequence there. Yes. And you may be even the least that guy. And you'd still have The it. next one you create will be number three. So three. we can come here and refresh. It's two, two. So we can come here and create another one by who's? Create one, yeah. And it will be number three because this exactly. is being kept by yep. SQLite. Okay, this is the last time we look at these tables. <laughs> Don't look at them again. Just worry about your tables. Yep. But this is our table. So we have now established a connection, created, created a, table, a table, and if you rerun the server, that's interesting. If we now we run the server, this line will be here. It will no, not it go will. away. Yeah. So let's do this. We come here to run and we start the server. Because there is this if not exists, then this line really will not run again. again. But we can come here and refresh. It's the data is there. there. Yeah. So the data is there. That's persistent. It's it's persistent, but we are not using the data <laughs> in our application, yeah. right? Yeah, right now. Not right now. We'll get to that. Yeah. So we will we'll change the items list here and all the interactions with this list. So anytime you see items like here and here, we will change those yeah. lines to, to use see select commands and insert commands, which is your get items and your post items. Yeah, to interact with this database. Yes. Yeah. All right. That that was a good start. Yeah. New branch. New branch and commit and everything, right? Yes. So this time get we'll be careful branches. about what we commit. Yes. Or really database. It's important to be careful now. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there is this database, database file. Yeah. We don't, we want, don't want that. that. Yes. So we can so right how about you it. add it to the git ignore actually. Exactly. Yes. We don't want to be careful not to commit this file because you can come here and just be careful not to select this yeah. file, right? It's too much effort every time you do it. Yeah, way. and people will Forget, mess this up. Yeah. So instead, what we want to do is to right-click it and say ignore. Yes. Now, anytime there is a file with this name, Git will know not to track yep. that file. Actually, make it ignore all files matching star db. No, no, the, the next one. Yes. So that no database files are actually committed. Fair enough. Okay. So when I do this, how is away. yeah, how is Git doing that? That's interesting. It can you go to git ignore? That's what I am thinking. Can I? Do you know where it is? I know where it is, but it's it's not, not really showing really up really. in IntelliJ, I suppose. Sorry. And is it showing here? No. Not even that. Interesting. So maybe what IntelliJ is doing is it's ignoring in IntelliJ. Let's investigate this for a moment. Is there a way to run a terminal? Yeah, there's a terminal. PWD. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So IntelliJ is ignoring for my computer. It is only yeah. ignoring here. So just do PWD. Do you think it's somewhere else? No. It doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. No, yeah. So oh, IntelliJ. LS A. There it is. I, I think I know what um, IntelliJ is doing. What? Uh, not config. What do we have here? Info exclude. I have no idea what IntelliJ is doing. I thought it was going to create this file that Git recognizes called dot .git ignore. Yeah. In that file, you can list all Whatever the files you, you want, want to ignore for this project. We created a Git. But for my machine, not for this project. So what I'm going to do is go right ahead and create a Git ignore with the contents star.db. OK, so I'm going to create a Git ignore. That cannot be right. He's checking the date, uh, the repository in GitHub. But I don't see it actually. You don't see it because it's not there. We don't have a git ignore in this project yet. I am so, creating one no, now. No, no. So you remember what happened that you committed the dot idea folder? Let's not talk about it. Yeah, I made a mistake before that I fixed off camera, 
And that was a configuration on my machine. You can see that what you should do to not make the same mistake. Yes. If you come here to the toolbox, there is a list of things you need to do, and that Get is ignore. that is part of it. This is a configuration for your whole um, your whole compute computer. Now we are adding a git ignore for this project, and the contents are just start db. And now IntelliJ we will ignore this file for my machine because I ignored it locally, but it will also ignore on everyone else's machine yes. because of this git ignore file. Okay, that was convoluted. Yeah. But now we can and come we here and commit everything. To a new branch? Are you on a new branch? I am. I just created a new branch, right? I am not sure. I did. It's called database. Yes. Right. Um, yeah, ev ev all the changes here You're look fine, good yeah. to me. So connect to, to database. database. Yeah. Commit and push. Yeah, yeah, yeah push. And there is now a pull request for database. You can just open up a pull request. And I labeled it as work in progress. Yes. Connect to database. Well, actually, use a database. That's the whole pull request. Yeah. It's going to be to use a database. And the first commit is to connect yeah. to the database. That looks good to start yeah. with. I think this is good for now. On yeah. the next one, we will use the database in to our application. Do something, yes. All right. See you on the All next right. one.